Sino's problem? Thank you. I don't know. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizer for having this workshop and also giving me a chance to speak here. So today, my I'm going to talk something about a uh, uh, recent project of me and John with Don Stanley and Stephen Terrio. Uh, the title is Steron's Problem and Weighted Polyhedral Products. Uh, this paper has just appeared on archive uh, this Tuesday. But before I go to start my... Okay, yeah. First, I probably want to explain the terminology, uh, the steering problem, because it I found that it's quite confusing to because a few people ask me what is the steering problem that I'm going to talk about. So uh, I'm thinking about the the classical realization problem in algebraic topology. So that is uh, the setup is if I give you a topological space, then um, then you can compute its um, homology range uh, over any commutative ring R, and this is a graded uh, commutative R algebra. So then the my Steron's problems <laughs> ask about the converse. So if I give you a commutative graded R algebra A, can you find space such that its cohomology ring is isomorphic to A? And um, this is a hard problem. So the simplest case is where the coefficient ring R is uh, the rational numbers Q. Uh, in uh, Quillens, in his uh, famous paper, Rational Homotopy Theory, wrote that one of his motivations is try to um, solve this uh, realization problem. And he showed that every simply connected rational algebra is realizable. Uh, but if you walk outside the rational world, things become more complicated. So even if we restrict ourselves to uh, the resolution problem of a polynomial ring, um, it's already a very challenging problem. And um, Stiron shows that not every polynomial ring can be realizable. Uh, they can be realizable if only if the degrees of the generators uh, is two or four. Uh, also, uh, I mean, like polynomial <laughs> ring for an integer. Um, then how about the realization problem of polynomial rings over any commutative ring and long-standing problems that have been studied for decades and there are many works study about this problem and um, it was uh, there was um, a, a, a complete set of answers uh, were given in 2009 by Anderson and Gödel. Uh, settling down the uh, relation problem of the polynomial ring. And I also want to mention one um, uh, one example, that is the uh, work of Barry Bendowski, Cohn, Gitlert, and the independent work by Trevisons. Uh, they proved that the um, any polynomial ideal range, uh, which is a uh, polynomial range quotient by ideals generated by uh, monomials with leading coefficient ones, uh, they are always realizable. They use polynomial, sorry, polyhedral products to construct a realization space of this uh, monomial ideal ring. Okay. So um, back to uh, about our project. So if you read uh, the abstract of my talk, so you know that the goal of our project is try to study the realization problems of a weighted versions of exterior algebras. So I have to explain what is the um, weighted version of exterior algebra that uh, we want to study. So to set the notations, so let me recall the definition of an exterior algebra on n generators. So everyone knows that <laughs> uh, graded modules, uh, it has an additive <laughs> um, consisting of exterior powers of uh, xi's. So here I want to uh, denote the exterior powers of let's say x sub i one sub i two uh, sorry x sub i one times x sub i two dot uh, up to x sub i k by x sub i one dot up to i k. That is, I want to represent any exterior powers of the generators by x sub some subset inside the uh, bracket n. And here I also assume that the numbers in the subset, they are uh, ordered in an increasing order, okay? 
So um, then the multiplications is determined by these equations. So we know that xi multiplied by itself equals zero, xi times xj will be equals to plus or minus xj xi. And by definitions, we have uh, xi1 times xi2 times dot, dot, dot up to xik equals to x sub i1 dot, dot, up to ik, okay? And notice that an exterior algebra can be realized as the commodity of a product of spheres of appropriate uh, dimensions. Okay. So now we want to construct a family, um, which is a, a, like a weight of versions of exterior algebra. So what we want to do is we probably want to want them to be the same as before uh, uh, as a exterior algebra as a graded modules, but with a different multiplications by adding a coefficients to the uh, multiplications equations. Okay, so here we, uh, as a, uh, it has a, uh, sorry, we require, uh, so we construct a, what we call a weighted exterior algebra um, as a greater module is spanned by um, some generator, um, which is labeled by subset inside the bracket N, and then we uh, define its multiplication by this equation, which is similar as the one before, except for the last one, we put a coefficient C sub I1 dot up to IK here. And of course, uh, in order to make sense, to make sure this algebra is well-defined, we have to, um, we require <laughs> coefficients to satisfy these uh, conditions, that is uh, C sub anti set, uh, and all the C sub I will equals to one. And whenever you have two disjoint subsets, sigma and tau, uh, C sub, uh, sorry, C sigma times C tau uh, has to uh, divide the C sub uh, sigma union tau. Okay. Then you can check that this condition will make sure this algebra is well defined. And I will denote this algebra by. Uh, lambda C D and C uh, will indicate the coefficient C sigma and D just um, indicates the degrees of uh, the generators X I's. So, so sigma and tau are disjoint. Sorry? Are they disjoint sigma and tau? Yes, they're disjoint. And if they intersect? They intersect then, uh, oh, sorry. Then that's zero. Yeah, then it should be zero, yes. I, yeah, I should write down, sorry. Okay, good. Okay, then the question is, okay, for which set, sorry, for which collection C and D is the associated exterior, weight exterior algebra lambda CD is realizable, okay? Uh, in a special case, when all the coefficients, uh, C sigma equals one, uh, when also, also like when N equals one, then the lambda CD is just the ordinary exterior algebra. And as I said before, they can be realized as the commodity range of product of spheres. So that is easy. Okay, but for n equals two, um, uh, this is not trivial. Okay, um, but it's still it is still workable. Uh, so uh, probably what you want to do is like, oh, okay. Uh, if you look at the case when c equals one, then you uh, then the product of sphere is a realization space. So the idea is, how about we just modify this? product of spheres in order to construct a realization space of lambda CD. And in fact, you can do it. And in fact, what you can do is like, you just take a degree C sub I, uh, sorry, C sub one, two uh, map on the spheres of dimension D one plus D two minus one, and then composite it with the white hat product map, which is the attaching map of the top cell in the product of spheres. Then if you take the metting cone of this guy, then it is a realization space, okay? Uh, then you may want to ask like, okay, then this, you can just apply this method to higher end case, then you can solve the problems. But it turns out that uh, this method doesn't work in the higher end case. Uh, okay, so let me show you. When n equals three, uh, if you want to do this method, then probably you, at some point, I'm not going to give you all the details, but uh, the difficulty is like, you need to find a map from a sphere of dimension D1 plus D2 plus D3 minus one to the union of all these uh, realization space that we have constructed 
in the n equals two case. And you want to make sure that when you compose to a map descending to the uh, fat wedge of the uh, product of SD1 times SD2 times SD3, you want to make sure this uh, composition map is up to homotopy to a multiple of the higher white hat products. And finding such a map is not easy. Um, although when n equals three, you can still put some conditions on the degrees uh, to construct such a map. But when n equals four, I think this becomes already becomes uh, unworkable method. So instead, so we try to add some uh, uh, add a new combinatorial conditions on the coefficients uh, to make the problem easier and workable. So what we want to, so what we do is, uh, okay, we just first we define a map called power sequence, which is a map gamma sending a subset a sigma to a sequence of non-zero integers that satisfy this uh, properties. So you have uh, the um, sigma sends to gamma sub one of sigma dot, 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 up to gamma sub n of sigma. And for each gamma i sigma will equals one wherever i is not in sigma. And also like you want uh, the gamma sub i tau uh, divide uh, gamma sub i sigma wherever tau, so when tau is a subset of sigma. Okay, it sounds a bit strange, but uh, why we want to do so is because if we have a power sequence, actually you can uh, construct a, um, a collection of coefficients C sigma by multiplying all the gamma i of sigma together. And you can check that the collection of C sigma con uh, construct in this way, they do satisfy the condition that I mentioned a few pages earlier. So um, what we did is like, oh, if we have these combinatorial conditions, then um, we can construct a space such that its cohomology ring will equals to lambda CD, okay? So uh, it seems like I have finished my realization problem. I can stop here now, but don't worry, I still have more to say. Uh, um, but what we found that is our constructions of the realization space can be generalized to something related to polyhedral products. So that's why our paper is called the um, um, is called Stevens problem and weighted polyhedral products. But the construction of this weighted polyhedral product is quite lengthy and a bit long. So let me just take the n equals three. Uh, so let me show you the constructions of this realization space uh, when n equals three as an illustrations. Can I ask a quick question? Yes. Um, is there an example where you know that your ring is not realizable? <laughs> I would, I don't know, I would say. I, I would say that like the, the algebra that we, we are we're able to construct maybe just be a, a subset in the whole thing. And um, I'm not so sure. I guess there will be more outside this, uh, outside this, uh, not, not satisfying these conditions. Uh, but yeah, I guess there will be something that can be realized. Can you imagine this is not an if and only if? I don't think so. Yes. Yeah. Oh, come. Any more questions? Okay, then we go to the boring construction part. <laughs> okay, um, so let's look at n equals three first. So when n equals three, uh, our gamma CD will uh, has an additive base uh, one x one x two x three x one two x two three x one three and x one two three, and then the multiplication equation is um, determined by this. Uh, so x one x two equals c sub one two x one, two, blah, 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 and so on. And also we want x1, x2, x3 equals to c sub one, two, three, x1, two, three, okay? Uh, so uh, now if we let 
S comma points to be a sequence of the pair of spaces of sorry pairs of uh, spheres and uh, points. Then we know that we can write the triple product of sphere SD1 times SD2 times SD3 as the polyhedral product S comma point uh, upper delta square. And if you take K to be any simplicial complex on these three points, then the S comma point upper K uh, will describe a subcomplex in this triple product. So for example, uh, when K equals just the vertex one, then this is just the SD1. Uh, if K is one, the edge one three, then this will give you the SD1 times SD3. Uh, and I say, if K is just the uh, boundary of this triangle, this, this will give you the fat wedge, okay? And what we're going to do is we try to construct a new space to replace uh, these subcomplexes in, intuitively, uh, sorry, uh, recursively, okay? So, uh, so we lose a lot of push out diagrams. So first, what we want to do is want to replace the subcomplex S D one, sorry, S comma point upper one two. So what we do is like we try to define this. We want to def uh, define a new space to replace uh, the edge S comma point one two and call it a the, the new space to be S comma point upper one two gamma. And we divide by this push out diagram, okay? Gamma? Oh, gamma is uh, just the 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 uh, power sequence. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay. Oh, spoiler. And so uh, here, like first, we just SD one watch SD two. So this is uh, you can realize this this subcomplex as the S comma point of the boundary of the edge one, two, and then you include it into the S comma point upper one, two. So this is uh, just the SD one times SD two. Uh, at the same time, you want to um, do a degree maps um, uh, determined by the gamma on each of this sphere of the wedge. And then we take the push out and we call this push out space to be S comma point upper one, two gamma then you can check that the cohomology of this new space uh, is spent by one x1, x2, and x1, 2, and x1, x2 will equals to c sub 1, 2, x1, 2. And then you can do the same thing to replace uh, the polyhedral product uh, associated to the other edges on 1, 3, and 2, 3 as well. And then afterwards, uh, then you need to replace the uh, we want, we want to replace the um, S comma, uh, you want to replace the whole SD1 times SD2 times SD3. So what you do is uh, first you just take the fat wedge, which is also the S comma point of boundary delta two, and then include it into the S comma point delta two. And then at the same time, you apply the degree map, which is determined by the value of the power sequence gamma to uh, onto itself. And then you use the eta map that we construct in the last step and then set it to the union of all this new map on the edges. And we take the push out. And it's something that you need to check that this composition map is well-defined. And then afterwards, then you can show that the push out map, so the push out space uh, has a cohomology rank equals to gamma CD. So uh, the idea is like we try to add some degree map into the attaching map and then you take the push out and then you do it iteratively and then eventually you get uh, what you want. Okay, as I say that you can generalize this constructions to something bigger. So first of all, we need to have a notions about a pair of space that have something looks like a degree maps. So here we introduce something called power couples. So we define power couples to be a pair of base map XA that is equipped with a collections of maps that we call power maps. Uh, rows of I such that uh, first the uh, row zero is just a constant map sending everything to a point and then 
row sub one you just uh, identity map and the composition of row A, row B will equals to row sub A, B. And we want this row A, the power maps to be um, compatible with the inclusion map as well. So here are some examples. So if you give me any pairs of uh, spaces X, A, I can always equip it with trivial power maps. That is, uh, or the row A will equals to identity. Uh, a is not equal zero, okay? Then we can treat it as a power couples or uh, back to our case that we have S1 comma point that we can take, uh, we can think of S1 to be a unicircle in the complex plane. Then we take the power maps row A to be the power, the, the power maps uh, T to power A. And also we can use these um, power maps of S1 to induce a power maps on any pair of suspensions. So we just defined the row A of TX to T to power A comma X. And another source of examples of power couples is, let's say we have a pair of topological monoid XA, then we just define the row A to be uh, the um, absolute A fold power, sorry, uh, absolute A sub fold power of X onto itself, okay? Okay, now if we have the power map, then we can generalize our constructions. So uh, to something what we call weighted polyhedral products. So first we have three ingredients. We have three parameters. First, we need a sequence of pairs of power couples. And we also need a power sequence gamma. And lastly, of course, we need to have a, a simplicial complex on endpoints. Then we can define a with the polyhedral products, which we call it X comma A upper K gamma, and also associative map sending from the ordinary polyhedral product to the weighted version one as follows. So in the first step, we just, uh, when K equals to the empty set, so the weighted polyhedral product is just the usual one. So which is a product of all the AIs and we set the eta uh, and this had to be the identity map. And then for K equals to just a vertex. So we just define um, our poly with a polyhedral product as a push out uh, by including the product of AIs into the polyhedral products of XA upper J. At the same time, we multiply each coordinate by uh, a degree maps indicated by the gamma. And we take the push out and then next like we have to define the then we have define any um xa upper boundary sigma comma gamma to be a co-limit of all those with the polyhedral products of tau gamma where tau runs through all the synthesis inside boundary sigma and then we also define the eta boundary sigma to this uh, composition like this uh, basically it's just come some um, degree maps indicated by the gamma plus the eta tau and then the inclusions. And then afterwards you just define your X A tau to be gamma to be by this push out diagram. And then in the end, like you just define X A upper K gamma to be all the co-limits of all these weighted polyhedral products. Uh, okay, one thing that I want to mention is that uh, in fact, this eta map um, it looks like a natural transformation, but actually they are not. They, they have some twisted terms here. So somehow that's why when you see that this eta K here is kind of, un, you need to take some uh, omega, which containing the K, which is minimum. So it's somehow is a bit um, artificial, but it's necessary. Otherwise uh, you may not able to glue them together. Okay. So, uh, okay, here's some examples. So uh, first, if all the pairs of power couples X, I, A, I, they are just the uh, pair of space equipped with trivial power maps. So our with polyhedral products will just give you the ordinary power, uh, sorry, polyhedral products. And similarly, if the power sequence is trivial, then the with polyhedral product is also equals to uh, the ordinary one. And here is a non-trivial example. So let's say if n equals one, and let's say gamma one one equals k, then the weighted polyhedral product of a d disk comma n minus one 
sphere will equals to a d d square for k equals one and is equals to a more space uh, of z mod k when k is not equals one. Okay, k is not zero either. But if you look at the weighted polyhedral of C, comma C, uh, punch you, uh, sorry, uh, take away the, 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 the origins, then this is just the C quotient by uh, Z mod K. And this is contractible, but this is not. So you can, you know, ordinary polyhedral product, we know that uh, D as K will be homotopy equivalent to C, C minus zero, couple K. So you see that there's some difference between the ordinary polyhedral product and uh, the weighted polyhedral products. Okay, there's not much time left, so I should maybe I should skip some of the slides. So uh, one of the highlight things I want to mention is about the suspension splitting. So in um, the ordinary polyhedral products, uh, Barry Bandowski has a suspension decomposition formula, which says that when when you suspend the polyhedral product, it will uh, split into a wedge sum of suspension of smash products nicely. Uh, in our case, we are not able to prove uh, full versions in the weighted polyhedral products. We are only able to prove a special case where um, all the AIs is a point, then we have something similar that we show that there is a multiple equivalence uh, that the suspension of the weighted polyhedral product also split into a Watch some of suspension of smash products. And furthermore, if each of the XI, they are suspensions and the power maps comes from the suspension structure, then um, the, the two decompositions, uh, homotopy equivalents, they can be related by these commutative diagrams in uh, cohomology. And they are related by a, this is eta maps here. Okay. And lastly, uh, probably I need to mention about the cohomology ring. So um, this is kind of like, uh, uh, so, uh, oops, sorry. Uh, well, uh, we're able to compute the cohomology ring when the subspace AIs are all points and when the XIs are uh, suspensions. And we also assume that all the XIs has uh, uh, Free our sorry, it's homology is a free our modules. So in this case, we're able to compute uh, the cohomology ring of this with the polyhedral products uh, as shown here and here. Okay. Uh, of course, our long term goal is try to understand more and try to uh, look at the co want to show uh, want want to study the uh, whether we have a, a stable splitting for weighted polyhedral product in a more general case and also try to compute the cohomology of them so uh, but I will just uh, focus on this uh, special case at the moment so we hope that we're able to say something more in future so I think my time is up so that's what I want to say so thank you for listening <laughs>